Hi, so today we are going to talk about Kafka. Kafka is an Apache project. It is basically intended to act as a message broker. So if any or no, any of you are coming from the background of using ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ or for that matter like TIBCO kind of messaging engines. So Kafka plays in the same kind of ecosystem. So here is a very high level overview of Kafka. Uh, so if you see here we have got the Kafka broker and uh, then there are producers who basically uh, create the messages and they publish that to the Kafka broker and then these messages are consumed by the consumers. Uh, there is this Jewkeeper which comes from the Hadoop ecosystem. It is basically used to um, manage the health of the Kafka brokers. So in a nutshell, it's a very simple messaging system. Let's quickly look into how to install Kafka and uh, how to publish simple messages and consume simple messages. We'll keep this tutorial very simple, just about installing Kafka and uh, how to do our basic first set of things. So I have got Kafka here. I have already downloaded it from the download section. So we can uh, just uh, unzip it here so let me do that quickly so once i do that there is a directory with kafka and the version number if i go inside the directory there are basically two important directories that you'll note here one is the bin and another is a config so if we go inside config you will see primarily certain properties file so if you remember the diagram that we just went through, there is the Jewkeeper. So Jewkeeper properties are basically handled by this one. Uh, the server properties, the broker properties are handled by this one. Then there is producer properties and then there is consumer properties. So in a nutshell, these are the important properties file sitting out here. Then the other important directory to look into is the bin directory, which contains basically the daemon to start the Jewkeeper then the daemon to start the server, uh, then there is a daemon to start your producer, uh, and uh, then there is daemon to start your consumer. So <coughs> that's pretty much about the daemons that are sitting here. So let's quickly start some daemons. So what I'll do is that I'll go to the home directory. So these all instructions are basically taken from the Apache Kafka projects home page. So if you go there, uh, I can quickly show you that. So if you go to the Apache Kafka home page, there is a Kafka documentation. It's a very good documentation in terms of initial steps. So we'll just follow that. So let me start with uh, starting the Jewkeeper. Oh, okay. So I'm getting this uh, VM option this is probably not existing in my VM option. So for this one, I'll just uh, basically uh, comment out that option. So I can go to Kafka run class.sh and uh, let me search for probably go down so here somewhere I should see yeah huge compressed oops okay so what I'll do is that I'll just copy this oops. copy Okay, and paste it here. I'll comment this one, and from here, I'll remove this option. This option is basically to compact your pointers. Uh, certain versions of JVM, especially Sun JVM, uh, supports them. So you just have to figure out that which is the right version of JVM that should be supporting this. So let's come back and start our Jewkeeper. 
so here it goes okay so if you see the zookeeper has started now let me go and start the broker so it takes the default server dot properties if you go inside config file and see the server dot properties you should be able to see what are the different options let me go to the right directory okay so again the server is started now okay so by default it listens on this 9092 port so that's how our server is started now let's do one thing let's basically create a topic so i'm all doing in different terminals so we can see the basically the actions that are happening on different terminals or while uh, then let me start the topic so i'll make a test topic okay oops okay i think i pasted it ah uh, no I, I will again run into trouble okay so i guess what i should do here is yeah it was just running across the lines so here we go so okay we have created a topic now if you want to see what all topics are created we can we have another this topics command so again uh, kafka has this capability that if the topic is not created it can create at runtime also it's not necessary that you always create it right in the beginning but it's again your design okay so if you see here it shows that there is just one topic we can do quickly one more thing we can see that if we can create test one also okay so here you go test and test one so i've got two topics now let's create the producer so this producer will be now publishing its message into the topic test so starting the producer is starting so it's again sort of another demon okay and let's go and sorry i am on a different directory okay now let's go and create a consumer so again if you see what we are doing here is that we are asking the consumer to consume from the topic test so our consumer demon is started so let me start giving it some messages here let me put it so we can see both together so let me say hello kafka so you see here it appears on the consumer window we can do some more hello kafka all caps so you see uh, the moment i put it in the producer it is getting consumed and put it into the consumer let's go back here and just uh, recap what we did so we started first with the zookeeper 
and then we started the Kafka broker. So once the broker they start, they basically register themselves to the Zookeeper, and then Zookeeper uh, keeps a check on their health. Then we started. We made a topic. We actually made two topic here, and then we started a producer and asked it to start publishing some message on the topic, and then we started a consumer. Which is basically listening to the same topic. So what we saw is that as, and when we were publishing a message in the producer, it was getting reflected in the consumer. Some of the things that Kafka at a high level goes different from the traditional messaging system is that Kafka uses the risk rights to maintain the logs of the messages. They actually do a sequential writes, so that way it gets very fast, and then. It's not being in memory. If Kafka is crashes and comes up again, it's it's very fast. And the other thing, it goes different from the other messaging system is that it doesn't pushes the message to the consumer. It's basically consumer who comes and asks the Kafka to give it a set of messages that it can process. So it's a pull based mechanism. But if you look uh, look little more deeper, that. Makes sense the way Kafka has designed it. Okay, yeah, I guess that's pretty much for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, bye.